Tonight, as I mentioned, Father Real will be presenting our message, but before he does that, I just want to take a moment to share a few words about a wonderful priest in our diocese, because we have many wonderful priests, but Father Real, I've got to know him over the years, because we've made some trips um, to World Youth Day together, and with youth ministry, and also serving here in the diocese. Father Real was ordained May the 4th, 2002, in the Diocese of September. So I have to do the calculation on the 125th anniversary last Thursday, May the 4th. Father Real celebrated his 24th anniversary of the priesthood. So thank you, Father Real, for your dedication to our diocese. He continues to be here with the faithful. Um, he serves as well as Episcopal Vicar for our Diocese of September. He's also involved in various ministries on the diocesan level, from youth ministry to marriage preparation, faith formation, and well-being of the priestly life. Um, as well, currently pastors three rural parishes, the ABC parishes I call them, Asperville, Bonfield, and Corbet. Uh, he's particularly involved with us in our evangelization team, as you know. The bishop is very passionate about evangelization. When he was first installed here as bishop here in Pembroke. That is one of the things he said for sure, that we will continue to evangelize, even in the midst of the pandemic. He's involved also with the Unbound Ministry and co-director of the new media office here for our diocese. Um, he is excellent in technology. Uh, Father, you can teach me a lot. <laughs> Father Real has a Marian devotion has taken him to Fatima Medjugorje and four times to Lourdes. From the beginning of his ministry, he broadcasts his homilies on the internet. The pandemic led him to migrate to live streaming his masses and many other prayers on numerous social media platforms to encourage others to help them to go deeper in their faith. Would you please join with me to welcome Father Real as he gives us our message this evening. about tonight, what to talk about. I asked 
the other members of the organization team to come up with uh, scripture meditations. They did not know, or I did not present it like that, that those scripture passages would be for me to have inspiration on what to say to them. Because I was stuck just on one of them. But they came with other inspirations that fit well, that make it flow of what I kind of want to say on behalf of the Lord. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the one who cares for each and every one of us. Jesus knows what is troubling our hearts. And he is attentive to that. The first scripture meditation that we see in today's uh, booklet is about Jesus healing the mother-in-law of Peter as she is bedridden, as she is sick, as she cannot perform her duties. Jesus is touched by the fact that that woman has a difficulty, has a challenge, is in sorrow. And Jesus will reach out to her, will touch her hand, will heal her, will bring her back to what she wants to do, what she needs to do. She'll wait on them, she'll serve them. That passage also has some uh, corresponding passages from other Gospels, because this passage was taken from the Gospel of Matthew. Gospels of Mark and Luke also present that, God, that passage. And uh, in one of them, I did not look, look to see exactly which one of the two other Gospels. Before seeing the mother-in-law sick, it is the people of the household, Peter, his brother Andrew, James and John, all those who were there, who talk to Jesus about that woman, who present to Jesus that person who needs help. And so this brings me to, to two things. First, yes, we see Jesus caring for that woman. But we see also the others caring for that woman, bringing Jesus to her. And so what does that give me to think? Jesus knows our troubles, yes, he sees our troubles, and he wants to heal us. He wants to reach out to us, help us. But he's also inspiring us to see other people's troubles and to present them to the Lord. Sure, maybe some of you have brought some people tonight with that in mind with that intention in your heart. Some probably have said to a friend or family member, come to that healing service. You would probably benefit from that. But you can also do that without the person being here present tonight. You know people who cannot physically be present here tonight because of all kinds of situations. And you're also invited to present them to the Lord. The Lord wants to touch them, even if they're not here tonight. And one of our mission is to present them to the Lord. Just like the household of that woman presented the mother-in-law of Peter to Jesus. Now, yes, in his lifetime and since he has gone back into heaven, Jesus has done countless miracles countless healings of the physical body. But in many occasions, when Jesus was about to heal someone, he did something greater than that. He healed their soul. Remember how when four guys brought down through the roof a paralytic 
who was not able to walk. The first thing that Jesus said to that guy was not your, take up your mat and walk. He said, your sins are forgiven. And he saw the faith of the people bringing this paralytic to, them, to him. So Jesus wants to heal the heart first and foremost. That word comes our second passage from a song. He heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. Yes, some of us have physical illnesses, or we know of people with physical illnesses. But all of us have spiritual, psychological, moral wounds that the Lord wants to heal that the Lord wants to comfort us, bring us comfort, bring us help. And this is what we also present here tonight to Jesus. All that is afflicting us, all that is afflicting those we know, that we care for. To be able to receive that, of course, we need faith. If we don't believe that Jesus can do anything, we don't give him any chances to do anything. Remember how when he was in Nazareth, he could perform very little miracles because they did not believe him. They did not, they just said, oh, he's the carpenter's son. But he really put on. But time and time again in the Gospel, we see people who have faith, like the centurion, in which comes our third passage of the scripture. The centurion who has so much faith in Jesus that he does not need Jesus to go to his place to perform a miracle, to heal that servant that is so dear to him. Just say a word and my servant will be healed. And those words are so important for us to deepen, to realize the depth of the faith that we should have, that the church has decided to use those words every day at Mass. When we are about to receive the Eucharist, behold the Lamb of God, Lord, only say the word and my soul. You are not worthy that you shouldn't enter the room. This is the kind of faith we have, we should have, we're called to have. A faith that Jesus can do everything he wants. That he wants us to present everything we need. Even the hardest, the heaviest thing. Now the passage that I came up with is the next one, again from the Gospel of Matthew. And it is a passage that uh, touches my heart more than once, quite often. Come to me, all you, all of you who are tired and carrying heavy loads. And for that I brought a few little props. You know all this. Right now it's empty, so it's very light. But you know all how much heavy that thing is when it's full of water. In 2023, in the 21st century, we're fortunate that it has a handle, we can carry it. It's heavy, but we can carry it in uh, Western societies. Now just imagine yourself going back 2,000 years ago or even going into your minds, into your foreign country, where those nice containers are not available to carry water, where most of the time it is big pottery jars, big pottery things to carry water. 
The pottery is ready to start, but the water is in here also. I wanted to find a pottery thing, but I spent so much on the next one that I didn't do that. So anyways, those are heavy. And of course, human uh, nature, as with the ingenuity of human nature, we have created something to help, something to distribute the load. Because imagine carrying one of those, imagine carrying two of those, and to be honest, most of the time in those countries, it's the woman carrying all that, it gets to be heavy. This represents, of course, what is heavy on our shoulders, what is heavy on our heart, on our soul. Especially with what Jesus is about to say in the rest of that scripture passage. We carry things that are heavy. And sometimes we don't know how to carry them. We're left on our own. We think we are left on our own. We just look at the problem at hand and we feel heavily burdened. We're tired. We're exhausted. And Jesus is telling us, I will give you rest. Come to me. Take my yoke and put it on you. When he said that, Jesus, he was referring to a particular thing. That's where I really wanted a prop to do it. What are those things? This one is made for a canoe. But there's all kinds of things like that that are made especially to go on the shoulder, and especially with the coat and this cassie that I wear, it's probably not evident. But it goes on the shoulder, and usually in countries that need to use those, they don't carry just one jar of water with that. They'll carry two. The load will be distributed on the shoulders. It will be much easier to carry the water. Just like when people use this particular one, will attach it to the canoe at a central point, <coughs> it will be easier to carry the canoe in uh, portages and stuff like that. So Jesus uses that image to tell us, put on my yoke. So there's something that Jesus wants us to put on our shoulders. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. What is the yoke that Jesus wants us to use? What is it that Jesus wants us to use to carry his burden? His yoke, his burden that we need to carry, of course, is following his will. Doing good, avoiding evil, avoiding sin. It's not necessarily easy to do that. We are affected by original sin. The uh, capital sins are those tendencies that draw us down and try to make us do evil. So the yoke that Jesus wants us to carry is his cross. The yoke that Jesus wants us to carry is doing the will of God. And as I say, sometimes it might not be easy to convert and change from sin to a virtuous life. It may take time, it may take effort. But ultimately, it will help us. It will be easier to do that then carry the burden of our life of ourselves. It will be easier to carry the cross of Jesus with Jesus than to carry our own crosses alone. 
I remember a preacher at one point was talking about how he was using a little story, a real story of course, but someone was complaining about their crops, the crops that they had to bear in mind. And they were complaining to Jesus, oh, give me a different cross, Jesus, I want, I can't bear this one. And Jesus said, okay, come, let's go into the warehouse of crosses. Put yours at the door there, and you see all the crosses there, take the one you want. So the guy was all happy. Oh, he saw a little one. That one will be easy to carry. Put it on his shoulders and tried to walk a little bit with it, and he noticed that it was too short that it was hitting the back of his leg. And that was not pleasant. So, no, not that old cross. Continued walking around. Saw another big one, but it seemed to be a light material. It seemed to. But when he tried it on, it was significant. He tried all the crosses like that in that warehouse, and he finally found one at the entrance of the warehouse. It fit him well. It was heavy, but not too heavy. It was not hitting his foot, his leg. It was not dragging on too long. It was perfect. And he said to Jesus, I want this one. And Jesus said, well, my friend, you've, took, you've taken back the cross that you left at the door. Very often we feel that we are carrying burdens that are out of our comfort zone. That's only because we try to care of them ourselves. Let us take the yoke of the Lord and put it on our shoulders. Let us give him our difficulties, our sorrows. Take on his, his call to do the will of God. And we will find rest. And when all of that has happened, when we have encountered the Lord, when He has healed us, when we have feel His presence in our life, His comforting presence in our sorrows, then we have a mission. Jesus is calling each and every one of us to talk about Him, to share His good news. To spread the gospel of Jesus in our life. The gospel is the good news of Jesus in our life. Not just the four gospels that we have in the New Testament, but how did Jesus work in my life? What has he done for me? We need to be witnesses. That's where the last quotation comes from. The mission that we have each and every one of us to proclaim Jesus to the world. Because others have sorrows. Everyone has sorrows, has difficulties. Uh, everyone is in need of Jesus. But do they hear about Jesus? Do they know that Jesus can help them? Are they aware that Jesus can heal them? Bring them comfort. Take their pain away. Be a comforting presence in their life. And so, whatever the Lord does in your life tonight, I invite you first of all to cherish it in a very particular way. To be thankful for that. But I also invite you to share it with others. Others who need to hear it from you. Sure, the priest at the front of the church can say all kinds of things. The bishop can present great homilies. But the call that we all have when we go back into society is the call of everyone to talk about Jesus. Not to have 
hammer for people's mind that they are sinful, that they are not doing right, that they are evil, and all of that. To give them a message of hope. Most of them already know that what they're doing is not useful, that they're, it's not good. They don't need to hear that part. They need to hear that there's a Savior for them. That there's a redeemer, that there's a God that loves them. He loves them so much that he died on the cross for them. He took on our sins. He took on our frailties, our difficulties. And he's calling us to unite ourselves with him on the cross. So that dying with him, we will rise with him. Because his story didn't look there. We're celebrating the resurrection for the past 2,000 years. Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen. And people need to hear that. They want to hear that. And it is our call, each and every one of us, to do that. So, let us now welcome Jesus in our midst in this Eucharistic presence. I'll go and get Jesus from the tabernacle, I'll go in the monstrance, and after a few moments of prayer, I will start a procession going down the aisle, stopping at every bench, for you to be able to see Jesus close to you. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you have come here for. Take the time to see your Lord who wants to heal you, who's the only one